What isn't special about Robotech and Voltron, Tommy? Other than that, they were seminal anime shows that helped introduce the Western world to this fantastic art style and kick butt robot shows with awesome characters. Other than that, what is special, Tommy? Robots. <laughs> and Mullets. M- m- yeah. And Mecca. And mice. That's right. <laughs> so that's three M's right there. Right, and when you put this all together, this just fuses into some like double-stuffed Oreo of uh, of awesomeness uh, comics coming this December. Yeah, I I think it's what really brought uh, anime storytelling uh, into the '80s, and uh, kids from that generation, uh, for kids of that generation, those are the two anime series that most of them really remember and identify with uh, as being their favorite series that got them into anime. Right. Yeah, we get that a lot too. If it wasn't, you know, Robotech, what Speed Razor, it's like that. That's the ones that were like, I don't even know what this is, but I like it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm just taking over the. I'll just that's interview. I, I think Speed Racer was kind of like the Trailblazer before them, but this that was in the late '60s. Gigantor. And nobody really had a name for it. They didn't know what to call it. This was not even Japanimation. They were like, uh, what is this? They have big eyes, but I don't know what to call it. But I like it. Yeah. Battle of the planets and stuff. The Toonami, huh? Well, see, yeah, you guys are young kids where that was like, you know, probably the first place you discovered. So it is fascinating. And now the thing we get, and I'm sure you get a lot too, is the younger kids finding it on Netflix. So, I mean, um, I mean, ahead of its time, I mean, Voltron was the first stereophonic cartoon show, I believe, it released in the U.S. And my boss, Ted Koppler, was the one who was like, this is what we have to do. He tells stories of like going into TV shops and they would, they would turn on the TV to Voltron to show off this hot new stereo. Check it out. Both channels kind of thing but um, I mean innovative and in, in, in I would so I, I, in learning more about Robotech I would say too what you guys did as far as the anime culture and itself releasing those books you know I think that really helped explain more so even than Voltron as far as like hey this is what this is by the way and, and sort of cultivated that community would you agree or disagree Tommy Yoon yes <laughs> uh, well an, another element um, and you know Voltron had some element of this but this was uh much more pronounced in Robotech was that the story was extremely linear. Um, nowadays, people are accustomed to that, you know, in the post-Lost era, you know, very linearly written television series. But when Robotech came out, there were cartoons generally weren't written that way. Uh, you, you had, you know, your Scooby-Doo adventure, and then, you know, after the, you know, after the meddling kids, that was the end of that, ep- you know, that was the end of that adventure. But with Robotech, it was 85 episodes long. And so uh, the saga. Yeah, it was it that was gen- really was a saga, and not just for a television episode, for an animated epi- uh, series written for kids. But it was written smart. Uh, that's what really brought in a lot of attention uh, from the people who got into the stories. Yeah, and I think there was there's almost different reaches where it was like Voltron, like the jocks knew what Voltron was, and it kind of transcended even the anime thing where you kind of compare it like He-Man, you know, uh, G.I. Joe, oh, Voltron's like up in there. And whereas I feel like a lot of the, how do I say it, smart kids, smart, cool kids like responded. They, they, they saw there's something else going on with Robotech. They, those tend to be the vehicle Voltron fans, too, who really get they, they they understand even at that young age thematically. Hey, this is deeper than Jabberjaw or something else, you know, from that. So does that answer your question? I mean, Toonami's the place, right? That that is that, and and as we saw today, there really is a love and uh, nostalgia for this. So uh, maybe it could be the Robotech Voltron uh, animated movie special. After after pe- people pick up the book, coming December, right there. Make it a Christmas morning. Get away from your relatives. Go to your comic book shop. Check out Robotech Voltron issue number one, written by Tommy Yoon, art by Elmer Damaso. Yeah, looks fantastic. Did you have a good time at the panel? Yeah, it looks great. All right. Stay on Toonami Faithful from Robotech and Voltron, or we'll form Blazing Sword. Right? What, what he said. <laughs> Control C. Control V. <laughs>